but as somebody who studied the industry that seeks to manipulate all of us on behalf of paid interests, I know that few themes arise in our environment organically. A noted propagandist told me, it's like a movie, he said, and it gave me chills at the time. Nearly every scene or image that crosses our path in daily life, he said, was put there for a reason, often by someone who paid a lot of money to place it there. What if the whole anti-fake news campaign was an effort on somebody's part to keep us from seeing or believing certain websites and stories by controversializing them or labeling them as fake news? But who would want to do such a thing? When connecting the dots, I find it often helps to follow the money. I wanted to know who was funding the nonprofit First Draft and its anti-fake news effort. I found the answer. It was Google. I'm not the only one who thinks the whole thing smacked of the rollout of a propaganda campaign. Glenn Greenwald of The Intercept wrote, the most important fact you need to realize is that those who most loudly denounce fake news are typically the ones most aggressively disseminating it. So what's the lesson in all of this? I'm not here to litigate who's right, but I can tell you there are two ways to tell that powerful interests might be trying to manipulate your opinion. Number one, when the media seems to be trying to shave or censor facts and opinions rather than report them. Number two, when so many in the media are reporting the same stories, promulgating the same narratives, relying on the same sources, even using the same phrases. I mean, think of it, there are literally thousands of legitimate news stories that could be reported in a given day and an infinite number of ways to report them. When everybody's on the same page, it might be the result of an organized campaign. I'll leave you with a final thought and a warning. It's about a new catchphrase being bandied about media literacy, as in we'll tell you who to trust and who not to trust. Media literacy advocates are busy trying to get state laws passed to require that their version of media literacy be taught in public schools. They're developing websites as resources for journalists and the public. They're partnering with universities. I think media literacy is a new name promoted by some of the same people who want to tell you what to believe. People with their own agendas using terms designed to fool you into thinking they're neutral authorities. What you need to remember is that when interests are working this hard to shape your opinion, their true goal might just be to add another layer between you and the truth. When so many in the media are reporting the same stories, promulgating the same narratives, relying on the same sources, even using the same phrases. I mean, think of it, there are literally thousands of legitimate news stories that could be reported in a given day and an infinite number of ways to report them. When everybody's on the same page, it might be the result of an organized campaign. Hi, I'm Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso, Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble trying to be responsible one sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish the same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 Your problem. There's a growing anti-intellectual strain in this country that many, that it may be the beginning of the end of our informed democracy. 
So what's the lesson in all of this? I'm not here to litigate who's right. But I can tell you there are two ways to tell that powerful interests might be trying to manipulate your opinion. Number one, when the media seems to be trying to shape or censor facts and opinions rather than report them. Number two, when so many in the media are reporting the same stories, promulgating the same narratives, relying on the same sources, even using the same phrases. I mean, think of it, there are literally thousands of legitimate news stories that could be reported in a given day and an infinite number of ways to report them. When everybody's on the same page, it might be the result of an organized campaign. is simple repetition. A steady, constant exposure to the same idea over and over again until the mind accepts it as truth. Very much related to this is the use of symbols for the power of a symbol is that it can in itself contain rather complex ideas, an entire belief system even, boiled down to a solitary, recognizable visual cue. Every time that visual cue is seen, it subtly reinforces whatever inherent concepts have been ascribed to it in the mind of the viewer. In the case of the symbol of the globe, when we see this icon, we see so much more than just a sphere. For embedded alongside the construct of the globe Earth is the correlating universe in which it is said to be moving, orbiting, spinning. And connected to the concept of the spinning, spiraling universe is the supposed origin of that universe billions of years ago. Along with the evolutionary origins of that vast universe, comes the philosophical conclusion that humanity is ultimately no more unique or special in our existence than a bacteria growing on the bottom of a rock, and the assumption that the universe would inevitably have randomly spawned a host of other species of life throughout the vast reaches of space. We assume that the symbol of the globe could only be so thoroughly ubiquitous and universally accepted, because it is what we all know to be the truth. We never stop for a moment to consider the possibility that perhaps the complete inverse might actually be the case. We all think we know it to be true because it is simply so universally accepted and constantly reinforced. But what happens when people start to actually question the monolithic paradigm of the majority? What happens when an individual attempts to stop and ask themselves just how many times they've really seen a true, genuine, undeniable photograph of the globe, and how many times they've merely seen pictures, logos, animations, renderings?
what do they finally begin to see?